What's up YouTube? This is Sly88Fry here. So I got a new video coming uh, out right now. It's actually going to be another React video despite uh, to a YouTube channel. Despite the fact that I didn't get very many views on my last React to this channel, I'm going to do it to this one because the video just came out. And regardless of whether this video gets views or not, I want to get this done just because, my goodness, it's... Uh, it's a very, very interesting subject that I just want people to see. And obviously there's way more people subscribed to this YouTube channel than to me. But I'm sure there are, do exist people out there who aren't aware, who somehow aren't aware of him but are watching this video anyway. So you got to see this. Video game demos, the appendix yes. of gaming, and one of the few throwbacks from yesteryear we still have with us today. Yeah. However, over the intervening decades, the sole purpose of a demo has always been to give the player a small slice of the game, enough into enticing them into buying the full product. However, even a simpler concept as this was too complex for some publishers who managed to ask up such a basic notion and gave them the full game, totally for free. So this episode, we take a look at these inductive integrations, these plenary productions, and these integral yeah. inductions. As I say, but I hope some of these hello, uh, you. demos still I'm exist. I'm Guru Larry, <laughs> and I welcome you Ooh. to Fact Hunt. Oh crap! Five video game demos oh, that accidentally contained. The full game. A light smoothie, but I'm drinking it too fast. Oh gosh, what a weird thing to put on the but video. First, a word from our sponsors. I have to skip Modern ahead on this. Details. Alert you when an account Bundy for fifty percent off. I went ahead just a tiny bit too much. Now that's good. That's good. A PS4 free demo. Ooh, I should tell John about this. As always, uh, we'll mean, start the episode game. with the most recent and well-known demo that accidentally contained the full game. Sega's Yakuza 6 for the PS4. Oh, Sega, the you know better than this. <laughs> ever get to join in the Mafia in video gaming without having to buy a Gizmondo. Now, upon its release okay, in 2018, I, I too soon. gamers Sorry. are already suspicious without having to buy a Gizmondo for the PS4. The closest you'll ever get to joining the Mafia in video gaming without having to buy a Gizmondo. <laughs> now, awesome. upon its release in 2018, gamers were already suspicious that the demo may contain the full game, mainly thanks to the hefty file size the download commanded. But being a modern wow. game, it was obviously impossible to access. Or so it would appear. Nope. The silliest yeah. part of this error was you didn't need to pull <laughs> off a glitch or cheat to play the rest of the game. Sega did such a lousy job at locking out progression after the first chapter that simply playing the game normally accessed you the full product. It was literally the full game, hands down. <laughs> Needless to say, Sega were rather embarrassed they had accidentally just given everyone a free copy of their new game. Dang. So promptly pulled the title from the PSN store, issuing an update patch for anyone who had downloaded it already to properly lock away the rest of the game once and for all. Mm. Well, to anyone foolish enough to accept the update patch anyway. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's true. Just don't update your fucking PS4 and you're good. <laughs> Sega Mega CD or the Sega CD over here. Okay, I may have mentioned this one in a previous episode, but this entry is notable for being one of, if not the first ever console demo. So, huh. teething problems aside, okay. it comes to no surprise that they managed to completely arse it up. Enter Keo Flying Squadron, right. JVC's wacky cute em up. Starring a 19th century <laughs> alien dragon riding key stealing bunny girl trying to save the world from a 3,000 year old raccoon with a PhD. 
So, with such wow. a bizarre premise like that, yeah. you're obviously going to need a way to convince the punters into buying the thing. Okay. So, JVC dutifully slapped a demo of it onto the cover of the third issue of Sega Pro CD. Okay. However, this demo lark was kind of new to the publisher. Yes. Rather than going to the length and expense of reprogramming an all-new version of the game, they just stuck the full version on the disc, <laughs> then added a little extra code to reset the game after the first level. The rest of the game forever locked out, with no one ever to wear it, it was even there. Well, it would have been that way if someone at JVC also remembered to disable the level select sheet in the game. And by simply oh. entering the code right, left, right, left, down, up, down, up, right, right, right on the menu screen, a number will suddenly appear at the top. Choose to start the game from level two and hey presto, you've unlocked the entire game and all for the price of a magazine. Wow. Did Sega Pro CD know of this foobar? Well, they never printed a cheat code in that magazine, so let's leave it at that. However, yeah. claiming the disc was the biggest ever playable Mega CD demo on the cover probably didn't exactly help their situation. It turned out to be so completely with true. with the full <laughs> version skyrocketing in price today, often going for over £200 on eBay, looking for the demo version of the game is a more cost-effective way to legally play the game, which mm -hmm. itself has also shot up in price, quite possibly due to my last video. <laughs> so, yeah, um, sorry about that. Man! <laughs> Battle Crisis 2 on a PlayStation, huh? Capcom's Resident Evil with Dinosaurs has never really achieved the same affection its living impaired brother has. Possibly as Capcom kept reinventing the franchise into oblivion. Yeah. I mean, dinosaurs Turok in space was of the much third well entry. Received. The hell were you thinking, Capcom? Yeah. However, when it came to the second entry, Capcom attempted to veer away from its Resident Evil-esque origins by making a more arcadey, action-based game with okay. Dino Crisis 2. So, to show the gaming world they had reinvented the title, offered a 45-minute playable demo of the entire game. Now, in all fairness, Capcom were fully aware the full game was on the disc already, it was the main selling point, even. Okay. So consider it more a time trial of the game rather yeah, than a demo. Makes sense. In fact, so much of the game was there, you could even save your progression to carry on when you had bought the full version. Huh. However, okay. what the big That's scene weren't spanking on was the existence of those pesky Game Shark cheat devices. Ah, While they normally used to give the player infinite health or money, etc., some unscrupulous fellow managed to work out the code to disable the countdown clock in the demo, effectively turning it into the full game. The coolest thing wow. about this cheat, however, is that the Dino Crisis 2 demo disc is actually based on an earlier build of the game, hmm. so hardcore fans can get a kick out of this playing a considerably different version of what was finally released. Huh. Needless to say, Capcom weren't too impressed when they learned of this discovery. Yeah, they're probably and pretty thanks pissed. Thanks to being so large a publisher, most magazines decided not to publish the code in fear of being blacklisted. Mm -hmm. However, Capcom learned their lesson and have never released a time trial since. But yeah. dinosaurs in space. Still can't get that out of my head. That is just dumb as hell. I, I bet people, I mean, I bet they thought they were so cool and so, you know, radical. Freaking, it's the 90s, you know. But they thought they were so cool with that idea. Dinosaurs in space, like, n no. <laughs> that's, just, that's just ridiculous. Hello, you. If you're enjoying <laughs> Fact Hunt, why not subscribe to be first to oh, see the I latest agree. episodes? Subscribe. And if you already are subbed, click that bell and choose all to make sure you're always informed. I agree. You, like, uh, hey, hey, I appreciate if you do, if you guys do subscribe to me. Um, but yeah, I also agree. You should, if you don't want to subscribe to me because whatever, you still should subscribe to him. Oh!
James While Bond. While its prequel and sequel never get a look in, Robocod has been re-released more times on consoles than a copy of Skyrim glued to a homing pigeon's arse. <laughs> God knows who keeps buying the blooming thing, but it's been constantly <coughs> ported to successive console generations, hmm. even as recently as the Nintendo Switch. Hmm. But despite Robocod's tsunami of releases, the platforming adventure of gaming's favourite Christmas-saving double agent cyborg goldfish first appeared on the Commodore Amiga and Atari ST. And, as okay. with nearly all AAA home computer games of the time, it meant the inevitable magazine cover demo disc to lure in those punters. Okay. Unfortunately, the publisher eight. Millennium were more generous with their teaser benevolence than they had anticipated. Literally. And either out of incompetence or laziness, put the entire game on the disc. Which, as with Keo Flying Squadron previously, is easily unlocked thanks to them forgetting to remove the blooming cheat code again. <laughs> At the beginning of the game, jump onto this roof here and collect the items there in the following order. Cake, hammer, earth, apple, tap. The first letters of which spell the word cheat. Then <laughs> simply walk awesome. left instead of right on the very first level and hey presto! You've unlocked the entire game and become invincible. However, wow. the most hilarious part of this entry is Robocod's demo was built on a beta version of the game. Oh, once again. One where they hadn't actually decided on the number of levels in the final release. So, ironically, using the cheat code on the demo gave you more levels than had you forked out the full price for a retail version. <laughs> Now, the ending is missing from this unfinished version of the game. However, considering it's only 10 seconds long, you're not exactly missing much anyway. Yeah. But whoever said cheats reminds never me of prosper. When, it reminds me of when Wario got flat, gets flattened in Wario Land 2, 3, and 4, actually, just the way how he looked like when he got flattened by that bag. Our final entry today is not only a demo that accidentally contains the full game, but said demo is also a hidden easter egg in a completely unrelated title. That's Spyro awesome. Year of the Dragon was the third outing of everyone's favourite chibi periwinkle wyvern, who was out <laughs> to rescue several stolen dragon eggs from the evil sorceress... Sorceress. I suppose they were running out of ideas by the three call. Yeah. But hidden within the of the Dragon is a secret playable four mini game demo of the Mario Party bandwagon jumper Crash Bash. To get to the hidden demo, all you have to do okay. is be on Sparrow's title screen and hold down L1, R2 and Square all at the same time. The screen will then go blank and start to load up the demo. So, all fine and dandy so far. Okay. This cheat was printed in a few magazines at the time, so perfectly legitimate. However, the demo itself contained a debug menu that essentially gave you the full game. To access this, simply go to the main menu of Crash Bash and enter the rather convoluted left right, left right right, left right right right, left right 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 right, left right 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 right. Then simply start the game normally and press pause. Just if you look at the bottom of the list, there's an right extra menu that allows you to not only access every level in the full game, but also completely break it. Like change all the game's rules, give you invincibility, hmm. make the opponents unable to move, and mess around with the game's internal settings in general. Pretty cool. Now hang on. Why on earth would someone put a completely game-breaking debug menu in a simple demo? Well, I don't know. that's the thing. It was never a demo to begin with. <laughs> what was actually contained on Sparrow 3's disc was a beta development copy of Crash Bash. Developers wow. would often add a debug menu to not only help them quickly root out specific bugs in the game, but when sent Makes out sense. to magazines to review, Save the poor journalist from having to get good at the game <laughs> to see everything it had to offer. That's funny. Okay, that explains what it is. What's it doing on a copy of Spyro 3 then, I hear you ask? Yeah. Put it simply, development time. Spyro mm. 3 was released in October 2000, and okay. Crash Bash wouldn't be released until a month after that. So to meet another game's deadline, some bright spark at the developer Eurocom 
decided to just nerf the beta version of the game and stick that on the disc instead to save time. Ow. I just forgot about the code to access the debug menu. <laughs> So, thanks to some absent-minded coder wanting to cut a few corners to save time, we have one of the most awesome video game demos ever made. Wow. Thank you, you amazing, anonymous, and slightly lazy techie. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> Hello, you. Thanks ever so much for watching. Be sure to subscribe to be first to see future Fact Hunt episodes. Click on the bell if you already are to make sure you're notified. He's and be sure a... to check out my other episodes. He's holding a... And if you want to be super awesome, check out my Patreon. But thanks again for watching, and I'll be seeing you next time. He looks like a... for now. He looks like he's holding one of those dice and you know those really fast air dryers at the uh, you know in public bathrooms. <laughs> oh. I don't know, it must have been like a certain angle he shot the image to make it look like he was holding it or something. Okay, that was a blast to watch. I'm really happy I saw that. Um, I was really hoping that all of these would be demos that are, well, actually, are are still available now with the full game. And some of them are, and that, that's, that's awesome. I mean, I figured it would mostly be games that came out like in the 90s anyway, when... Uh, I, I, I mean, the first time I recall ever seeing a, a game demo was in the 90s. I remember um, my family is, they're not rich or anything, but we, but in the 90s, I grew up with the Super Nintendo, Sega Genesis, PlayStation 1, and the N64. I had all four of them in the 90s. And no Sega Saturn. Yeah, we didn't, we, I, I think we kind of just forgot that system existed. <laughs> But, and, and anyways, um, yeah, the, uh, I remember seeing, um, somebody put in a disc into their, into the PlayStation 1, and then there was, like, just a screen showing a bunch of screens of different game demos. I was like, wow, that's pretty crazy that there's, like, on one disc, there's the, all these demos for a bunch of games that I, I thought that was pretty cool back then, although... You know, it doesn't compare to what we have now when you just go on the internet and just find whatever you want most of the time. But, um, still, uh, it's, it's, it's pretty hilarious that there could be a mistake like that. Like, I'd, I'd, I'd say that's kind of a big deal if there's some glaring flaw in how you designed the demo for your game that it you can enter some kind of cheat code from the game itself to, um get past you know the programming of the demo where it says oh you've got past this point you you you're done with the demo you get, you get past that point and then you can play the rest of the game like it's pretty impressive that mistakes like that would happen but you know mistakes they happen you know um nobody's perfect um like i know for sure if i uh, ever got really hardcore into coding and I'm, I'm trying to i'm learning python on team treehouse uh i'm sure even if I actually became successful, I'd probably make a ton of mistakes too. <laughs> you know, I already make mistakes with the videos I already make right now anyway. So that said, once again, that was a blast to watch. Um, thank you so much for watching. Please like, comment, and subscribe to see some more videos. Click that bell icon to actually be notified of my videos because I don't actually get to upload as much as I'd like to. And I have other projects I have planned. The React videos are mostly around to make sure I have content still on the channel, despite my schedule, because they're a lot quicker and easier to make. But I do plan to do some live streams. I was actually hoping to do one today, but that's just not going to happen now. Um, or maybe it will, I'm not sure. But I still have plans for my Family Guy Theory video. I have some top tens I'm planning on. Um, eventually I'm going to have this laptop to myself instead of having to share it and I'll be able to have more time despite my work schedule. So anyways, thank you so much for watching. And yeah, I do recommend check out Larry Bundy, also known as Guru Larry. He's he's amazing. My favorite video from him actually is, uh, it's actually in my favorites playlist. It's the game that introduces Bean the Dynamite. Uh, it's, it's these two birds and there's like this uh, code you can enter to make it turn to, to turn the game into some kind of 
pornographic thing. It's it's hilarious. I love to watch that every once in a while. It's just so ridiculous. But <laughs> anyways, uh, that'll complete the video. Thank you so much for watching.